Hi, welcome back to the Best 22 series. We had a cracking start with the defenders and then 24 hours later, we got the news that Jacob Wiedering had hurt his calf. So here's to hoping that when we do the midfielders today, we don't see anything similar. Uh, but though, for those of you who are not familiar with this series, basically I'm gonna go through and pick seven of what I think to be the best uh, midfielders in the team who I would pick in our best team. And then at the end, I'll get you to do the same. We will do the forwards shortly, but today is all about the midfielders. Now, this was actually harder than what I initially, initially thought it would be. Um, my midfield must have a Ruckman. I actually have both Ruckman, so I've got Pitto on the bench, and you will see shortly that I'm starting Tom DeConing. And I think 12 months has changed the perception around Tom DeConing, changed the narrative a little bit. Well, firstly, he's a bit more mature. 22 going into 23, we were seeing glimpses. We didn't know if he could take control of that ruck position for consistent periods of time. I think we saw that change in 2023 like we hoped it would. And so 23 going into 24, with finals experience under his belt, with a strong finish, with no contract negotiation distractions. I think we're about to see Tom DeConing's best. I think he just will get incrementally better over the next few years. And so for that reason, I've got him starting on the field. It doesn't really matter. He and Pitto will take the reins and they'll chop and change. Voss has made it pretty clear that he likes that as well. Uh, I think it gives us the best chance to give our midfielders the first chance at the footy when the ball goes up. So uh, I'm excited for Tom DeConing to be playing again in 2024. And, you know, if he can just go up another level, uh, we started seeing the marking, we started seeing some scoreboard impact at the very end. If he can get that 10 to 15 goals a season when he does rest forward, it's going to make us such a harder team to play against. So uh, Tom DeConing is the first picked for me in there. Then I've got Cripps. Cripps is just... This would be 10, pretty much 10 straight years that he would be named in this position if we did this every year from when he was drafted. Uh, maybe the year after he was drafted when he really announced himself. But yet, yeah, nothing really crazy there. In actual fact, I might just skip straight to the, the midfield four. So if I'm at a set of bounce and I want the best there, I'm looking at this combination right here. Tom DeConing with Patrick Cripps. Sam Walsh and Adam Chera. You got Cripps as you know the contested ball first to the football. Um, he's now got options and he's now got trust in teammates to perform. And so he's got to help get the ball out to, to Walsh and to Chera or whoever else is in that midfield as well. And I think this is a nice balance of a bit of athleticism in there, a bit of speed, uh, good handball game in, con in congestion for all three of those actual midfielders. And I just like the way this looks, to be honest. I think this looks the cleanest. This is These, these are essentially our best three midfielders in my view. Uh, then we start talking about the wing. Now the first one, Blake Akers, he's earned the right. He's just earned the right. Uh, great season in 2023, capped off with a brilliant finals run. Uh, not expecting him to be a superstar. The I, I actually think the same expectation applies, you know, last year than what it does this year. Just just get your job done. It doesn't need to be a star. It doesn't need to save us. I mean, it, it helped a lot in the final series for sure. Uh, but I think over the course of an entire season, he's just got to continue to play his role. He's one of the best in the league at it. So uh, we're very fortunate fortunate to have him. And so I've got Acres on one wing, and then on the other wing. I've got Sam Doherty. So why have I got Sam Doherty? I think Sam Doherty is now a midfielder. That's how I look at his game. I think with Zach Williams coming into the side, uh, we have another piece in the back line that's coming in. And I think the plan with Doc was always for him to become a midfielder. Now, just because he's named on the wing here, that doesn't mean he won't attend center bounces. It's just more that he's part of the rotation on the field. Uh, and we saw that with good effect at the back end of 2023, uh, particularly when we were missing Walsh, when we were missing Chera, 
Uh, we started seeing more of Sam Doherty in the midfield. We've also started to hear and see snippets through Carlton Media of Doc being a midfielder. If you go on the Carlton website, he's listed as a midfielder. Just little things like that. So I've got Doc there, and I think he's a he's a smart player. He's a defensively minded midfielder, so he's accountable. I feel like he will play that, you know, wing position in a similar way to what we see Cottrell do, which who we'll touch on in another video. We see Blake Akers do it. They just cover so much territory and they get up and down the field. And I think Doc's got that running power. I think he's also got the smarts to, to play on the on the defensive side of the ball. So I've got Doc there and those are my six on the field. And then on the bench, this was difficult because all of a sudden, I mean, you know, you want Ollie Hollins in there. You haven't even started talking about Matt Kennedy. Uh, I've got George Hewitt on the bench, uh, but there's there's quite a few others that you can put in here and it, it just goes to show this is the best time to do this exercise because you have assumed that the list is healthy. Um, but in this case, every one of these midfielders is healthy. So it's, it's a good sign. So I've got Hewitt. Reason being, we are a contested side. We need a little bit more than just Crips in there. I know Akers is a strong body. I know Doc can be a strong body. I know Walsh has a good contested game and so does Chera. But I look at them more as um, sort of distributors in the chains. Um, you know, they're prolific ball winners. And I think Hewitt helps Crips, always has. And I think he always will, so long as he's at the club and in the team. And I'm a big fan. So I lean more towards Hewitt. You could put a, you could put a Kennedy here and float him forward. You could do uh, an Ollie Hollands. You could do a lot of things, but I'm just going with what we need to win a game today. So those are my seven. Uh, interesting discussion because I I really like Ollie Hollands. I really like him on the wing, um, and maybe I should just put Sam Doherty in the back line, but I don't think that's that, that's what we're going to see for the majority of 2024. I also like this mix of players. It also gets me very excited for what's possible. So uh, let me know. Have, have a go at this. Pick your seven midfielders, six to be on the field, and seven, the seventh one to go onto the bench. Ultimately, they'll all play. So have a go. Let me know what you would change in my midfield and, and write down what you would have in your midfield. And we'll go from there. Go Blues.